Florence Nachwala Chiyinji is a Ugandan businesswoman and politician. She is the Minister of State for Youth and Children Affairs in the Cabinet of Uganda. She was appointed to that position on 6th June 2016. Briefly, tell us about yourself. My name is Florence Nachwala Chiyinji, the Minister of State in charge of children and youth affairs in the country. And probably more to that, um, I was um, appointed to head the youth ministers in the Commonwealth Task Force, which are a position that I've held for now four years, but I'm also a sports person, the vice president of the Federation of Football, FUFA, and the first woman to hold that position in the history of the country. So I'm a proud mother of five, but primarily I was uh, a minister in the kingdom of Uganda for close to 12 years. Yes, I've been a leader for as long as I can remember. How did you receive the news of the position you hold? Well, uh, as I always say, I did not take my ministerial appointment lightly. I did not. Much as uh, I was always being appointed to these uh, very uh, important positions in a lifetime, it has always taken me first as a shock, but more importantly as a challenge that I needed to hold the mantle. But, well, I received the news gladly and, and honestly, then I immediately realized that I'm the right person and I measure to the task. How has the experience been since your appointment? Oh, it has been um, sweet and sour, uh, very busy, challenging. Uh, the youth have been uh, uh, restless but manageable. The children have been uh, uh, looking at me with uh, golden eyes that I'm a saver. I am uh, a shoulder to lean on until every child has a shoulder to lean on. I have been uh, in this particular appointment realizing that I was the best placed person to hold it because I love the children, I love the young people. Because whoever you see as an adult has one time gone through this experience and more, the children will still go through the same experience. But what I realized is that what makes the people uh, sometimes complain is that the small things have not been attended to. What hurts people is not really the big things, but it is the small things. The country is grappling with a few issues of uh, lifestyle and, 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 and uh, social uh, character, moral degeneration, the spirit of not caring, and the spirit of thinking that there is someone out there who, who is responsible for what I do. Someone is responsible for my children, someone is responsible for my lifestyle. So that is where I place my emphasis, that in doing all that I do, I look at the nitty gritties. I'm a positive thinker and I believe that whoever comes across my, my some, whoever I encounter gets away with a smile. You come with a problem and go away as a friend. So I have realized that my position is really nice and lovely. What are the challenges of a woman holding such an influential position? Yes, it's quite dynamic when you have to, 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 to involve yourself in a position where you must balance the home the husband, your economic engagement, the children, your relatives and friends, your bosses, and above all, the people you serve, the target audience. So to a woman, it, it is really, really a mouthful and a bowel full of uh, uh, so many uh, uh, items on the menu that you have got to know that nobody misses you at the end of the day. And being a politician means that almost everybody claims you. So the challenge is to make sure that your home does not miss you, your husband does not miss you, you're not, uh, un you, you're not underscored because you're a woman, simply because you're a woman. You've got to, ch to, to show the world that you can perform m as, as much as the men can do. And I think in Uganda we have been able to hit that. Not only me, but the big women, the Rebecca Kadagas of this world, and I myself, we have proved to the world that we can perform much more than even some men. So that is a challenge and that's where the president, you know, uh, finds a lot of joy that the women he has right now can prove to the world that yes, they can. How do you relate to the 2020 Women's Day theme celebrating 25 years of the 1995 constitution milestone of promoting gender equality and women empowerment in Uganda? Yes, sure. Uh, uh, to me, in coming up with this theme and realizing that it works, you know, a theme must trickle down to the heart of every woman. 
it is not enough saying that this is simply a theme, but it must make sense in the lives of each individual woman. So what we have today, we are operating a patrilineal community where the men are perceived to be the landowners, they are per uh, perceived to be the property owners, they are perceived to be the decision makers, and you find that the majority of women have worked and earned money and entrusted the money with the men. They have gone abroad, they have been on Cheyo, they have made money and entrusted the money with the men. And they have come back only to find the men have got other wives and they, have, uh, they, they do not consider uh, the same return. That if you have contributed to the wealth and, and, and soul of this home, then you should be given uh, the, the, the same return that you expected when you were engaging in this relationship. So they have lost it all. They have lost the children, they have lost the money, they have lost the love. And that comprises a, a bigger portion of the women that you see today. Some women men are not happy because they have not got the return from a life's from a life's engagement. So when you're talking about this empowerment of women, you cannot separate wealth from women. You cannot separate uh, decision making from women. You cannot separate uh, de decision making from women. So we are talking about those three fundamental principles which only can tantamount to a, a, a developed woman who forms the basis of this nation. So to achieve empowerment of women, we must remove our hearts, we as leaders, and go to the women welcome the women have the women become part of us listen to them and solve their problems almost instantly though some of them have started to be empowered and they have broken homes they have broken marriages and they do no longer consider uh, any relationship in a home to be that of a submissive relationship so we must find out if you're empowered how do you still maintain yourself as a woman i am married to a member of parliament so in one bed we have a minister and we have a member of parliament. So given my own example, you see that we celebrate marriages every day, every other year. We are wedding and, and we are with my husband on the stage. How do I make it? How do I ensure that I'm still a subordinate within a home that is wealthy and has all these hearts uh, alongside? So that is a challenge that we must all think about, that empowerment does not rip you from being a subordinate and from uh, paying uh, attention to your children, listening to your children, listening to your mother-in-law, loving your children and believing that the children need their fathers anyway. What inspires you in life? What inspires me in life is for someone to say that if it was a natural change, I would not be where I am. I have listened to almost thousands of those statements. Mm -hmm. At first I thought it was a joke and I went on hearing a lot about the media talking about me, the church leaders talking about me, the, you know, people from all walks of life saying that that lady can solve your problem. So to me that statement summarizes it all. Because if you're a leader and nobody says you can, ha you can help, then I think that that is not leadership. So we are taken by events. We go to ceremonies, we talk about policies, we talk about that. But people, some people do not understand this. They want you to be part of their day-to-day -day life. They want you to answer what, what is on their, their table at night. They want you to answer, why am I not being loved? They say, why, why have I lost all my money? So we have to settle the, the, the primary problems in a home, which home is the smallest unit in society, if we are to build up the society. So what inspires me is to make sure that I help people. Yeah. What don't people know about you? What they don't know about me is that I, I, I take long to believe in money. They see me having money, but they, they don't know that I did not care, even if I didn't have it. For me, I have a background in Bogana Kingdom, where I worked for 12 years without, without a salary, without any pay. So to me, what I do best is when I don't have money. When I move out, when I don't have money, I do a lot of things. So probably what people do not consider in the current situation is someone serving you free of charge and not expecting a return or a reward. And probably what they don't know that much is that I'm so spiritual. I'm a person of God. I believe so much in God. And I believe that every other day, it is me, it is him to show me direction. It is him to give me the answer. It is him to, to put a table be, be between me and my enemies. So that is what I have to tell the world. That one, they should know that I'm, so, uh, I'm, I'm a person of God so much. I am I'm someone who is not interested in rewards or money. And basically, finally, that 
I love my husband and that's it. She's inspired by seeing families unite and women becoming empowered to make it in life. What general advice would you give to the women watching you today? Uh, women make up almost a bigger percentage of the society that we have. If only we could stand up, shout out, and prove who we are, Uganda would not be the same again. Until the women believe that the, yes, they can, we can take longer to get into the middle income status. I have had beautiful women crying all day. Why are you crying yet you're beautiful? I have had people believe that they cannot take a step unless the men help them to take a step. I have had people decline positions in very big, you know, uh, big, big positions because they, are, they have been stopped by the husbands. I have had parents refuse to take children who are a girl child to school. I have had all sorts of excuses from women. So if we can all stand up and shout out, one time maybe we shall walk through the middle aisle when we are, when we are all saying yes, it's now the Women's Day. Uh, we, have, we have had the, the kind of president who prioritizes the women. So if we can use that chance of the political will, I believe we can go so much further. And I thank the women who have taken the mantle, the highest women, the, 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 the women who are house girls in the homes, who are not allowed to, to even visit their children, who are not allowed to watch TV, who are not allowed to do all these, these things, to get married. So how about those, those girls who are in those homes? So to all of you, watch UBC. Maybe one time you'll have a solution.